today's topic is um, obviously uh, Jeffro Container Registry. So um, here's our agenda for today. Uh, we are uh, going to um, talk about, uh, yes, what is Jeffro Container Registry? Why uh, you need Jeffro Container Registry? Uh, we are going to talk about what technologies uh, Container Registry supports, uh, what type of repository it supports. We're going to talk about multi-repository promotion, which is a very, very important aspect. Uh, we're going to talk about the importance of metadata. Um, we're going to talk about build integration in JFROC CLI, about artifact query language, about security. Um, I will going to show you a demo, and we are going to talk a little bit about how um, Jeffro Container Registry stack against competition, and then we will have uh, we will have time for for questions. Um, that's me. My name is Baruch Sadogurski. I am uh, a the uh, head of DevOps Advocacy at JFrog, uh, and uh, but we can continue our conversation on Twitter. My hashtag is, uh, uh, sorry, my, my Twitter handle is at jbarrow. So JFrog Container Registry. Um, first and, and most important thing that you need to uh, that you need to know is Jeffro container register is based on on Jeffro artifactory so it is Jeffro artifactory under the hood and it means that you get the same uh, the same quality you get uh, 10 years of experience of managing binary files you have proven scalability uh, to like amazing amazing scale uh, and and all that kind of building in Jeffro Artifactory, in Jeffro Container Registry. Um, it supports um, two main technologies of the container uh, ecosystem, and that's um, uh, container images, namely Docker uh, and uh, Helm um, and, and Helm repositories. Um, another very important feature that we kind of throw, threw in uh, and it, we will see how useful it is, uh, is the support for generic repositories. And generic, <coughs> sorry, and generic repositories basically means you can use it for for whatever you like and, and do whatever, uh, whatever work needs to be there. Um, uh, it's intended for teams to get started with the artifact management and con uh, containerization. It's obviously, uh, um, uh, fully um, uh, fully operational and you can use it for for in any any state of your team but the main uh, the main purpose is you getting started you look for container registry that's a great uh, and and free option um, it's hybrid it means that you can have it on prem or you can have it in the cloud uh, it's up to you you can combine the two if you need more than one um, container register installed, you can combine um, in the cloud uh, setup with uh, with on-prem. So that's what hybrid means. Um, the next question is why uh, Jeffro Container Registry of all the others? Uh, so first and foremost, it's 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 free. You can download it. You can use it. There are no uh, limitations on number of users, on number of servers, on hardware, um, on uh, on on anything basically. And and uh, uh, it's it's absolutely free to use without any uh, any limitation. Uh, it simplifies the flows. Um, it, it fits the, the simple flows with no requirements on managing internal binaries. So if you are good with uh, versioning the, only the images that you produce, if you don't need, need to uh, save and manage uh, the internal binaries, um, then Jeffro Container Registry covers your, your scenario completely. Uh, it's good for co-located teams uh, without requirements for for artifact application. So if you have an organization uh, which works in one uh, in one place locally, this is great. And um, if you don't require um, any kind of um, complicated distribution scenarios and this kind of stuff, basically, if you only need a container registry by itself, Jeffro Container Registry, we believe, is actually the best um, the best option for you. And as I already mentioned, it's uh, it's free. As I mentioned, it supports Docker Registry, 
um, soon enough we will have a full support for container registry uh, spec for a um, CRI um, and um, for now it supports Docker uh, completely um, so that that works out of the box uh, it also supports a uh, helm uh, as it defines in helm 2 and helm 3 uh, helm chat repositories um, those before they without the extension of the um, container uh, container registry um, helm repositories and as i mentioned it supports generic repository and generic repository is super helpful for managing um, other type of artifacts uh, for for repository types it supports a local repository by local repository we mean it's a place when you deploy your own docker images and helm uh, and helm charts uh, so this is like a physical storage uh, on Artifactor itself. A remote repository, remote repository is a proxy for um, remote uh, registries and repositories. So you can proxy Docker Hub, uh, you can proxy um, um, other um, any any other Docker uh, Docker registry in the world, and uh, Artifactor will uh, lazily store the artifacts that come. Uh, sorry, Jeffrey Container Registry will lazily store um, images that come through Jeffrey Container Registry. So everything you resolved through this remote repository will be saved and will be there. You will see it uh, during the demo how it works. And that obviously um, makes uh, your life easier in terms of both uh, resolution times and also you're protected against outages and, and, and what's not. Um, and the th third part of a uh, repository uh, of repositories is virtual repository and virtual repository uh, is very useful for providing a single URL, a single registry for you for multiple registries or repositories behind it. So you can have uh, any number of different uh, registries defined, virtual, uh, local, remote, or virtual, and then you can have a single virtual registry that will give a single URL for Docker to connect. Again, this is very important and, and unique, and the combination of three of them uh, is unique across the board of different container registries, and you will see again the importance on each and every one of them during the demo that we are going to see. Um, another super important uh, feature that kind of comes out of this multi-repository setup uh, is the multi-repository promotion. Um, there is a trade-off of how you build promotion across your um, Docker images. Um, you can promote the Docker file and then rebuild from scratch. This is obviously very dangerous because you might end up uh, having a different Docker container than the one that you intended in production. Another uh, option is having multiple registries installed. Um, and then uh, how do you promote between these multiple registries? Um, it will usually, uh, you will have to do something like pull, retag, and push. With, uh, it doesn't make any sense with uh, uh, Docker um, images, which are big and slow, so that won't work as well. Uh, with Jeffro Container Registry, all that is solved because you actually set up multiple registries uh, that sell from the same uh, from the same backend, uh, from the same storage. It looks like different registries for Docker. Uh, which uh, provides rich security and quality gates, and the promotion actually is free and 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 immediate. Actually, not even fast, but immediate because the files are not not only they are not uh, downloaded and uploaded from network that you will have in the push retag pull scenario. They are not even moved in your uh, local file system because the file system remains the same. So you get all the benefits of how to, having multiple registries, rigid um, uh, rigid gates, but without any costs, and the promotion is actually free. And again, we're going to talk for that about, about that in demo as well. Uh, metadata, um, Jeffrey Factory shines with metadata 
And obviously, um, Jeffro Container Registry inherited that because all the metadata works. Um, all three types of metadata that, that exist, implicit metadata like the name of the files or the Docker images, the path of the layers, um, the checksums, uh, the sizes, this kind of information, explicit metadata, for example, how it was created, what was the build name, the build number, and any custom metadata that you want to add stuff like QA state, target architecture, or any other type of metadata um, is available. And then once you have this metadata, you can set it through stuff like build integration and JFROC CLI, REST API and matrix params, um, or, or even the UI. And then once you, obviously, you probably won't do it through the UI, but that exists as well. And, and then when you consume the metadata, you can consume it by filtering by matrix params. So you can construct a query that will only refer to um, the, the, the images in a certain state. Or, or a certain uh, maturity. Um, and and um, another option, obviously, is using um, uh, GFROC CLI that, all, that also uh, is, a, is a great way. But uh, you can uh, even do it with, um, um, with, the, with the REST API, for example. Um, uh, another very, very powerful option uh, would be would be using artifactory query language. And just for you to give an example how artifactory query language looks like, um, that's a, 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 JSON, uh, a JSON query that uh, here you can see how it queries for a certain file that comes from a certain build with the build number. And you can imagine how it actually works with um, other uh, metadata. So you can query, for example, a file that was downloaded, more than number of files, uh, or was created by a certain user, uh, or uh, had some um, target architecture, uh, or any combination, uh, obviously any combination of those as well. Um, another very important aspect of any container registry um, is uh, security image scanning, and um, you need it to prevent your next hard bleed to, um, to hit you. And um, th there are two aspects. The first is control, and this is um, built in, obviously, and uh, having a generic repository provides you more control because it allows you to um, Control not only your uh, your images, uh, but uh, also uh, your dependencies. Um, I will show you an example how you can make sure that what you pull into your doc Docker images uh, is under your control as well. And um, actually, Jeffro Container Registry uh, provides you uh, information from a Jeffro X-ray, uh, which is a, a security tool from, uh, uh, from JFrog that uh, features the best uh, security vulnerabilities database in the world, VulnDB by RISBEC Security, and um, your uh, JFrog container registry will be able to show you vulnerabilities um, on your Docker images that come from um, this source, from, from VulnDB. Uh, it's coming soon. I have a preview on the demo. But uh, in the end of the day, you will get it as well, and you will get it. Uh, you will get it for free. Uh, so with that, um, let's get uh, let's get to the demo. So what I wanted to show you is, um, let's say I have a Docker image, and uh, it misbehaves. I need to troubleshoot it. Something doesn't work, uh, and and the problem is that I don't know much about this Docker image. Um, it's um, the name is latest, and it doesn't really help me. And I don't, I don't even, um, I don't, I don't know what's going on. So uh, what I can try to do is I can run Docker inspect on this image, and actually see if uh, that gives me more information. Uh, so what what do I see here? I see layers, which are a bunch of um, 
um, um, uh, which are a bunch of checksums, and then more checksums, and then some flags. Okay, here are environment variables. It's all Java. Uh, well, not not really not really useful. Uh, the, the only useful piece of information here is the SHA-256 of this image. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to go to JFrog uh, Container Registry and see if I can get any information about it. Uh, so uh, um, I have a checksum search here that I can use and I can see what's going on. So um, here, this layer is actually a bunch of Docker images. So I have latest, uh, but I also know that this, this the same image is actually a bunch of others. So for example, um, 21 and 19, 23 and 26, it was rebuilt multiple times. And, and this actually is already very, very important information that from which I, I, I know what's going on. So I can go to any of them. Let's go to 26, for example, and I can see here what's going on with my Docker image. I can see here the Docker info. I can see the layers, what actually happened on each and every slide. Um, and I can also get the same information in, in different views. So there is a package view. Uh, that I can see, show me all the packages. Here's my JFrog Docker app, and I can see here latest, that's the one that I have, but also 26, that's the real version number. And again, here I can see the layers, and um, I can see what's going on. So getting back to um, to look at what we are looking at all um, the the docker image that uh, we look at, uh, we, we looked at is uh, here it's inside a repository that's called docker prod local uh, docker prod lock 26 that's the one that we are looking and now let's see how it actually got there uh, so we can see we can look at the metadata, the properties here, and see a bunch of stuff, uh, useful stuff like Docker, like build build name and build number, and also build URL. Build URL that's a, a link uh, to the CI server uh, that created this Docker image. Let's go and see the CI server that we used was uh, Jiffy Pipelines, and that's um, uh, a CI and CD tool uh, from JFrog. Uh, it's in preview release, but um, I know a guy that knows the guy that gave me access, so um, I can show you how it looks. But uh, what we actually interested about is seeing this pipeline, and let's look at it and try to understand what happened and how this Docker uh, image ended up in uh, where it is. So we can see a number of steps. The first one is a uh, build Docker app. So we can see here what we do. We actually um, just run Docker build and build our image. Nothing interesting here. Push Docker app. That's a more interesting step. So you can see here that we perform Docker push and we perform Docker push into a repository, into a registry that's called Docker, right here. It's called Docker. What is this Docker? Docker, if we look at the list of our um, repositories, is this one. This repository is a Docker registry that it's called Docker, and it's actually where this, uh, when our, where our CI actually pushed our uh, our image. And what we can see here, that we have a list of included repositories. That means that Docker is a virtual repository. So if you are going to list of virtual repositories, we can see our Docker image, our Docker registry right here. That's our repository and that's our registry. And you can see here that it includes four other Docker uh, uh, repositories, Docker registries, Docker prod local, Docker dev local, uh, and then Docker remote and Bintry Docker remote. Two locals, two remotes. Uh, now, virtual means that it actually hides multiple registers under the single URL. And when pipelines pushes an image to uh, this, um, pushes an image to, the, to, to this uh, registry, the question is, 
out of those four, where actually it goes. And for that, we have a setting here, which is the default deployment repository. Default deployment repository, this is where files that are pushed into this repository will end up to. And, and we can see that they will end up in Docker Dev Local. Now, going back to our list of repositories, this is our Docker Dev Local. And we can see it's pretty empty. There is only one here. 26 is not here. Local is not here. So the question is, what's going on? Why? Um, it's not here because, as you remember, we saw it uh, pushed here and push was successful. The answer is there is additional two steps in this pipeline. The next one will be publish build info. And the publish build info is the publication of the metadata about this build. So if we can go to our Docker registry, we will see that uh, the builds that uh, our um, CI server creates actually got recorded in the build browser of J4 Container Registry. So you can see here, we have the demo cube on builds, uh, like a lot of builds here, and you can see how they are registered, and you can see stuff like which modules is published, which environment variables were available. So for example, we can see what version of Java we used, right? Um, uh, I think, yeah. Uh, and and uh, <coughs> um, what else is here? All this information actually comes as a JSON file that's been pushed. And this is what um, build info, published build info step does. The next step is promote the build. And promote the build is after we run the tests. Here, there are no tests, but in your environment, you will obviously have tests. You can promote this build from Docker dev local to Docker prod local using um, just a um, just REST API, or using JFrog CLI, or using the native capabilities of the CI server. So this is an example of using um, REST API, so we just use curl. And you can see here that what we run is promote, and we promote it from a Docker dev local to Docker prod local, and we promote our build. And this is why when we look at the container registry, we will actually see our uh, image not in Docker, Docker dev local, but in Docker prod local. Here it is number a 26. Now, why this is critical? This is critical because each and every Docker repository in Artifactory, like Docker Dev Local or Docker Pro Local, is actually a full Docker registry from the perspective of Docker client. And if you build this promotion pipeline of moving files from one uh, repository to another in Artifactory, you will build those quality and security gates from the perspective of Docker client. So for example, using this kind of promotion, you can guarantee that your runtime environment won't even see anything before it was promoted to production, because it will only see the Docker prod local as it's a Docker registry. And until the images end up in Docker prod local, your production environment won't be able to even see them. And moving them there is just a question of one REST API, which is very simple and actually moving them. Uh, we have two more um, REST APIs here, so we'll look at them first. Um, this one is actually does something very interesting as well. You can see that it's, uh, again, a call for the same promotion API. But this time, it actually keeps it in the same repository from Docker for local to Docker for local. But it renames the, uh, uh, the, the image from um, um, from uh, the run number, from the build number, to latest, and does a copy. This is why we have here um, two um, different, two, the same images under the two different names. This is the 26, and the latest, they actually refer to the same um, uh, to the same image, and this is very powerful because uh, although we all know the, the problems of latest, and that's 
um, that a latest might not refer to latest at all, having the ability to use latest is actually very convenient because you just do Docker pull and you will get one which is the latest at the moment. How can we make sure that latest refers to latest at the moment? Exactly how you saw it. We are going to uh, re retag every new build as latest. But now there is another question. How do I know what latest refers to? And this, we, um, pr we provide this information as additional uh, metadata, as I told you, the custom metadata that we spoke about. And here is an example of how we do that. Um, we add properties, and this property called Docker refers to. And I put it on the latest, and I put here the build, uh, the build number. So you can see if I look at the latest, and I look at its properties, I can see here a flag, I can see here an entry, Docker refers to 26. And this is how I know that it actually refers to the build, um, uh, to the image number 26. I know the latest is actually this one. And this is obviously very, very powerful. Okay, now after you saw how it works, let's take a look uh, for a second at the at the Docker at the Docker file that we created from. So uh, you can see uh, here. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is the? Well, I can just show you in GitHub. Um, okay, that's the Docker file. It's Docker app, and you can look at the Docker file. This is all it does. Um, it basically uh, takes some WAR file and adds it to um, uh, to our Docker image, and then and then we're good to go. Now the interesting part to see here is the from the from the Docker image that is a, a basic dependency for our image is also an image that comes from Jeffro Container Registry, and this is an image. It is called Jeffrock Docker uh, Framework. And you can obviously see it here. Um, here it is, um, Docker, Jeffrock Docker Framework. And we rely on number five. That's the latest one that is checked and, and proven to be good uh, to rely. And um, this uh, Jeffrock Docker Framework is also built using uh, Jeffrock pipelines and also uh, went through the same uh, promotion and stuff. So if you, if you look here at the pipelines that are available, we can see here that we have the Docker, the build Docker framework. Um, the last one was, um, uh, let's see, uh, that's the Docker app. Uh, let's find number five. Yeah, here you go. Build Docker framework. That's the uh, framework number five that we that we relate. And you can see here that uh, what happened is it was built and then it was pushed, and then it was promoted. Very much alike. What I wanted to show you <coughs> here is um, how. That's the from, and it builds from a, another one, and and here, okay, that's we already already copied it. Uh, I wanted to show you where the dependencies come from. Here, artifact configure, Docker login. Okay, it's. Uh, I cannot see. Reaching pipelines. Um, okay, this is where we boot the container. So here, all those files, the Tomcats and um, and and the JDK, they come from Jeffro Container Registry as well, and they come from a generic repository that we have. So here we have a generic file in which we have the dependencies that our framework needs. So you can see here that we have the Java JDK that we use and the Apache Tomcat that we use, and they also come 
from Jeffro Container Registry. They also come from a controlled resource. This is how you can guarantee that you know you don't download a bunch of unknown files from unknown resources over the internet, but instead you have everything controlled in one um, in one repository. And it, Speaking about control and how you get everything under control, you can actually see the integration with the security part. Um, if you are going back to look at our Docker Pro Local and uh, look at our application, we can see here, and um, sorry, on manifest, you can see here an X ray tab. And uh, this is a preview. Um, uh, on, on how integration with Jeffrey uh, um, X-ray will work. So you can see here a bunch of vulnerabilities. You can click on any, any one of them and, and see all the information about what, what's wrong. So you can see here that we have a vulnerability uh, in, uh, in TAR, and this vulnerability is actually in this layer, and this layer is in this Docker image. And then you can see the component, the summary, the description, and comes from from us um, information about the CVE, which CVE is it contains, and then all the information you need in order to see and understand what's the issue with um, uh, with, with this image. And obviously, you will see all the vulnerabilities for all those files, right? So just to recap, um, Jeffro Container Registry. You can install it for free on-prem. You can grab it for free under a free tier on any of your uh, major uh, cloud providers, uh, Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud Platform, and Microsoft Azure. Um, it's all for free. You can create unlimited number of registries inside uh, the Jeffro Container Registry, and they will be either local, that will be storage for the images that you deploy, uh, or a remote, that will be the proxy for um, uh, for remote repositories. So I didn't show you the remote, a Docker remote, uh, a Docker remote, you can see here that um, it actually cached um, three different um, uh, images from Docker Hub, and that's uh, one that we used for our base image. Uh, so they are also cached, and you have control over there as well. Uh, or virtual, which allows you to define a one unified um, URL or unified view for uh, more than one um, Docker uh, repositories, which means Docker registries um, underneath. And then once you done do that, you can build promotions um, from a one registry to another registry that are immediate, uh, immediate and free. And obviously, the importance of metadata. You saw how uh, properties on Docker image actually um, give you uh, any kind of information about it. You can add custom properties here and then query them with REST API. Or, or artifactory query language. Oh, it works the same for Docker, and it works the same for Helm. So you can see here that we have actually a Helm a package of artifactory Jeffro Container Registry right here, and that's a, that's a, um, a Helm repository uh, that you can see all the charts and dive into any chart to see any details. So with that, let's go back to our slides and talk about um, and talk about competition. Uh, so the competition, um, you can see um, how JFrog is different, and that has to do with um, with the demo that I showed you, right? So uh, you you saw um, I spoke about how uh, a hybrid it is. It's on prem and in the cloud support Docker Registry, Helm Repository, generic repositories, remote and virtual, and the support for metadata. Uh, if you compare it with uh, Amazon ECR, uh, well, it is obviously in the cloud on AWS. They have some on-prem uh, capabilities, but they are very limited, uh, and it basically supports only Docker Registry. There is some kind of metadata that you can uh, apply on the images, but nothing as powerful as JFrog CLI or 
um, artifact or query language that comes with it. Um, Google Container Registry, um, absolutely the same. Uh, it's in the cloud, but nothing less, nothing more. And it only supports Docker and nothing um, except of that. Um, same with the Azure Container Registry. It does support Helm repositories, but that's the only thing. Everything else is um, pretty much uh, not existent. Uh, GitLab Container Registry, uh, they are on-prem um, and and uh, in the cloud, so they are hybrid. But again, they only support Docker and nothing else in any other uh, option. And uh, Harbor, as uh, the most advanced of them all, um, uh, installs on-prem, but doesn't really have any good uh, cloud uh, solution. It supports Docker, it supports Helm. Um, there is some kind of remote repositories, but they are not integrated and there are no promotion. Um, obviously, no virtual repositories, and uh, the metadata capabilities are very limited and nothing that can compare to artifactory um, query language. And um, so um, I think, uh, I hope I convinced you that um, Jeffer Container Registry is the best container registry out there at the moment. Uh, and with that, uh, we have about um, 10 minutes to, to answer your questions. So um, now will be a good time to ask them if you didn't already. Um, wow, there are a lot of questions. This is great. So let's get to it and get through those questions. Okay, so um, the first question is the, the, the relationship between Jeffrey Container Registry and Artifactory open source. Um, so I would say those are different editions of Jeffrey Artifactory, um, and they support different subset of technologies that are supported in the full version of Jeffrey Artifactory. Uh, open source version supports uh, Java repositories and generic repositories, uh, and um, Jeffrey Container Registry supports um, uh, Docker, Helm, and generic. Uh, there is no way to combine them uh, in, um, in 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 any way, obviously. Um, and if you uh, want to, and if you want this support across the board, I would uh, recommend uh, getting Jeff Robert Factory. Uh, if you still look for a free solution, you might very well install two of them. Um, there is no like license limitation on doing that. Um, I would personally say that the hassle of managing more and more tools uh, in some point of time will get uh, more expensive than just having one artifactory instance that supports all of them. I have that, that's, uh, that makes sense. Um, um, another question is, can I proxy a Docker container registry that requires license and predation for access? The answer is yes. When you set up a, a remote repository, you uh, there is a way to provide authentication, and this is how you connect to uh, other container registries which are which require authentication uh, to to in. Um, another question. Um, um, last time I looked, promoting Docker image within repositories required API call, which is fine for be blind blind, but small project might like manual process. Is there is a button in the UI? So there is a, there is no button in the UI. It's still an API call. Um, what I would suggest for smaller teams that don't want to uh, deal with those all those flags on curl and what's not is writing a one line of, of a shell script. Um, that takes two parameters and 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 uh, simplifies uh, simplifies the the work. There is no there is no button on the UI, and from my best knowledge, there is, it is not planned uh, as well. Um, uh, did I hear it right? X-ray will be offered for free with, with Jeffrey Container Registry. Yes, you did. You heard it right. Um, information from X-ray will be uh, offered free within Jeffrey Container Registry. You will have a view uh, that allows you to see all the vulnerabilities um, on your images uh, inside Jeffrey Container Registry from Jeffrey Extra. Yes, I'm glad um, that's that's exciting. That's also exciting for us. Um, uh, 
Docker Docker build to use. Please show how to take Docker Bees to use the generic app. Ah, okay. Um, so I think I understood the question. Uh, the question is how can I provide information about what I do in my build info? Uh, how can I provide the information? Uh, sorry, what I do with my generic repo? How can I provide this information inside, um, inside the build info? And uh, for that, uh, I will share my screen again because. I want to show you where to find it in the documentation. It's very, very easy and straightforward. So um, if you just Google for JFrog uh, CLI, uh, you will be able to find the documentation. And here in JFrog CLI for Artifactory, you will see all the build integration part. So you can see here, uh, how, uh, for example, uh, from, uh, you will find specs. So you can see here, how can you provide a file spec, uh, which is a group of file, and then uh, you can uh, um, uh, Add uh, you can add build uh, build name and build number to the commands for downloading and uploading uh, those file specs, and 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 those um, files then will be recorded in build info as dependencies or artifacts. File that you download will become dependencies. File that you upload will become artifacts, and that's exactly. Uh, how it works. So basically, when you run commands such as let me find it real quick, download files and upload files uh, here, to, 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 upload files. So when you run an upload command, you can sp you can provide a file spec and then build in build name and build number. Once you do that, those files if you download will become dependencies for your build. So I hope that helps. Um, how the data is stored? Uh, we're looking for a way to share registry across regions. Can we do it with JFrog? So um, uh, JFrog Artifactory uh, has a number of different um, data, uh, data providers, uh, which range from local file system through NFS and all the way to S3 data provider. They are uh, different between different subscriptions. Um, JFrog uh, Container Registry uh, provides a, a local file storage, which means the files will be saved uh, on a local disk. Uh, if you need more scalable solution, like all the way to S3, then it might, uh, it might make sense to look uh, on different subscriptions, on different license of JFrog Artifactory, like Pro and Enterprise, or even Enterprise Plus for a real big installations. Um, also, what provides you with um, uh, sharing the registries across regions uh, is replication, which also available in um, uh, Artifactory Pro, Enterprise, and Enterprise Plus. And application will provide you um, moving, uh, making uh, Docker images available in other instances of JFrog Artifactory at the moment um, they are pushed into local um, images of J uh, local instances of JFrog Artifactory. Um, can you admit the data to the image after it's pushed or only during build time? Uh, obviously, we can add the metadata whenever we like. Uh, what we can, what we saw in pipelines, that it was like a separate step, so it's not really related to the build. We first built it, and then we added metadata, and this uh, can be much later. There is some metadata that we want to add during the push, and that will be build name, build number, and environment variables during the build. All this information, which is relevant to the build itself, but we can definitely easily add more and more metadata after actually in any any point. Um, 
Another question is what free means uh, with the, with cloud business model, uh, and and um, this means that we have a free tier, um, like any other a provider of a container registry in the cloud. Uh, you can use uh, you can use it for free up to certain uh, storage and 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 traffic limitations. And, and so, so the answer is yes, it's free, even uh, even in the cloud. Um, um, another question is: uh, If I'm already using the Refactory, do I need to use Jeffrey Container Registry? And what um, is the relationship? So the good news are: If you already use Refactory, unless it's uh, um, it's uh, the other free editions like the open source version. Or the the Conan edition, the community edition, uh, the, the full JFrog Factory already contains all the functionality of JFrog Container Registry, so there is uh, no need for you to do anything. You already have your JFrog Container Registry built in into any uh, JFrog Factory um, JFrog Factory instance. Um, I think that's that's pretty much all. Um, if you have any additional questions, I have like we have probably a couple of more minutes, and and uh, if not, thank you very much for coming. I hope you found this webinar uh, useful, and uh, please go ahead and use Jeffrey Container Registry. We will be more than happy. Um, you know, if you just grab it, install it, start using it. No questions asked. This is from us to you, free and unlimited fees. Okay, with that, thank you very much.